Welcome back, forensic students. Today's topic is sketching the crime scene. So we are in our introduction to forensics unit, and in a previous lesson, we discussed, discussed the steps of crime scene investigation. And what we learned is there are seven steps that have to be followed in chronological order, starting with securing the crime scene. So investigators are going to come in, first responders can assist, they'll secure the crime scene. That's where that yellow crime scene tape goes up, officers barricade the crime scene and just make sure that anybody who enters the crime scene, they're documented on the crime scene log. Uh, simultaneously, you have witnesses that are going to be separated. So if there are any witnesses at the crime scene, they're separated, they're questioned by detectives. In step three, investigators are going to do a quick scan of the crime scene and any evidence that just jumps out at them, um, they're going to mark with evidence markers. Uh, in seeing the scene, which is the next step, investigators are going to start taking pictures of the uh, evidence that's been um, marked. And then in sketching the scene, which is the next step, investigators are going to make a crime scene sketch. And that is our focus in today's lesson. Uh, after the crime scene is sketched and evidence is photographed, then a full complete sketch um, sorry, a full complete search is conducted by the investigation team where they declare a search pattern and they do a full search of the crime scene and then any new evidence that's found is marked, photographed, and added to the sketch. And then finally, in the last step of crime scene investigation, evidence is secured and collected and packaged according to the chain of custody. So those are the seven steps of crime scene investigation. And when we uh, went through that lesson, I told you that we would come back and do a separate lesson for sketching the scene. And that is where we are today. So today's objective is to learn the process and procedures for sketching a crime scene. Now, once a crime scene has been photographed and sometimes in the midst of evidence being photographed, investigators will need to sketch the scene. So the crime scene sketch is an invaluable aid in recording what we call investigative data. And a crime scene sketch is going to depict the overall layout of a location and the relationship of evidentiary items to the surroundings. So this is basically showing the layout of the crime scene and the placement of evidence relative to each other. There are three different sketches that um, can be executed at a crime scene. The most common sketch is called an overview. So we're going to just briefly go through each of the three types. Uh, an overview sketch is just a bird's eye view or floor plan, if you will. So if you were standing above the crime scene looking down, you would notice or you would see an overview. Um, so you can see on the screen that we have the perimeter of the crime scene and we have some measurements. We can see that there's a filing cabinet uh, present at this crime scene, a bookcase, a desk, there's a locker. We have some doors, a couch, there's some windows. Uh, we have a legend here that tells us that this piece of evidence, evidence A, is a crowbar. We also have directionality here. Uh, we have a note telling us that this is just a rough sketch of the crime scene. We'll talk about the importance of that in just a second. And then some other information about the crime scene. So this is what we call an overview sketch or a bird's eye view. Another type of uh, crime scene sketch is called an elevation sketch. And this is done when we have like uneven ground or a home or landscape that has different levels. And this just portrays a vertical plane. It's almost like uh, how you would draw it if you were standing parallel to the scene, looking at the scene. Again, though, you'll have measurements. Um, you'll have important information about the scene. You'll also have directionality. The third type of crime scene sketch is an exploded view, or it's also called a cross projection view. And this just consists of a combination of the two previous types of sketches, so overview and elevation. It's very similar to a floor plan, except it's like the walls have been laid out flat. Um, so let me show you a picture of what that looks like. Okay, so this cross projection sketch, it's like um, if you had a house and you cut the uh, cut the walls and laid them out flat, this is what you get. So you have a bird's eye view here in the center portion, and then um, you can see the windows to the room, the door to the room. Um, I don't know if this is a sink uh, and a couch. Maybe this is some sort of drawer. 
Um, again, though, we have a legend, we have a scale, we have directionality, and we have information about the crime scene. Now, measurements should be made without disturbing the crime scene. So one of the things we noticed in these sketches that we were looking at is they all contained measurements. Um, so measurements are important to crime scene sketches, but they have to be made without disturbing evidence or disturbing the crime scene. Uh, graph paper should be used when creating a sketch, and this is to ensure that the sketch is drawn to scale. Um, so what typically happens is investigators will do what's called a rough sketch at the crime scene, where they just kind of sketch out by hand and on graph paper, uh, the perimeter, and then all the parts of the crime scene and all the evidence, and then they'll take it back to an office um, and use a computer program, like a CAD program, to just spruce it up and make it look nice, because oftentimes these sketches will be shown in court to a jury, um, and it needs to be, it needs to make sense. Now, for the rough sketch, if investigators do just draw a rough sketch by hand and it's not drawn to scale, they'll just have to indicate that it's not to scale. Some equipment that's needed for sketching the crumb scene, graph paper, pencils, uh, because you have to take measurements, you're going to want measuring devices. So this could be tape measures, surveyor wheels. Uh, a lot of investigators use uh, digital or laser range finders. And then a really cool contraption that's being used by a lot of forensic investigators is something called the total station um, and it just does a three-dimensional scan of the crime scene and then creates a three-dimensional digital version of the crime scene that is very elaborate. Um, for investigators to determine directionality you need some sort of compass um, and of course rulers and uh, maybe a clipboard. Some evidence, like a body, will need to be triangulated. Uh, so triangulation is measuring the distance between the evidence and two fixed points. And what this does is create sort of a triangle. And so this is why we call it triangulation. So you can see in this picture here, we have a victim. And what the investigator has done is measured from the victim's head to a fixed point at the crime scene. So this corner wall here. Um, and they determined that was 36 inches. And then they measured from the victim's foot to another fixed point in the room. Um, and they indicated that this was 240 inches. And this would just give jury members or anybody who's looking at the sketch an idea of where this body is in relation to other areas uh, of the room. Now on the sketch, true north should be labeled. So this is, I referred to this earlier as directionality. Uh, and a scale of distance should also be provided on the sketch. Uh, when applicable, the sketch should include a legend or key. So you can see here in this sketch, we have a victim, we have a couch, and then we have evidence that is lettered. Well, we need to know what those letters mean. So there is a legend or a key here that tells us that um, D is a cigarette butt, uh, a is a glass with brandy, um, H is a black felt tip paper mate pen. Now the rough sketch can be converted into a digital representation of the crime scene. Oftentimes that's not going to be done on the scene. Um, a lot of times that's done um, back at the investigator sketch artist office. All right, what we're going to do at this point, because you are going to have to actually perform a sketch. You're going to have to sketch a little mock crime scene, and so you need to know the steps. How, how are you going to go about doing that? And so we're, I'm going to walk you through six steps of sketching a crime scene. So here's where you start. Step one, you're going to start by drawing an outline or the perimeter of the area on a piece of graph paper you're gonna to wanna to include windows. So we use these little rectangles here to represent windows, and then doors are gonna be represented by openings in the outline. So step one is drawing the perimeter. Step two, you're gonna measure the perimeter of the room, and you're gonna indicate those distances on your graph paper. So you can see here that this crumb scene is 32 feet by 26 feet. Step three, you're going to sketch in any furniture or any immovable pieces at the crime scene. So if this is an outdoor crime scene, uh, you might have a tree that you sketch. Um, here we have an indoor crime scene, so um, you'd want to sketch any furniture or anything that you think is important to 
um, understanding the layout of the room. All right, sketch evidence um, marked with evidence markers. So remember, when we are working a crime scene, uh, prior to the sketch, evidence has been marked and photographed. So it is very important that the evidence shows up on the sketch. So if investigators have marked evidence with evidence markers, that evidence needs to be included on the crime scene sketch. All right, step four, we want to label the diagram with the date, the time, the location, and the victim's name if you know it. Um, an unknown victim is commonly given the name John Doe if it's male or Jane Doe if it's female. In the fifth step, you're going to triangulate. So again, that's where you take, uh, you're going to make two measurements from a fixed um from a fixed point in the crime scene or at the crime scene to that piece of evidence. Uh, typically, investigators do this with each piece of evidence. So if you have 30 pieces of evidence at a crime scene, you can imagine how crowded or messy this might get on a crime scene sketch. So these measurements can be noted on a separate document um, or on the actual sketch. All right, the final step, you want to indicate true north on the sketch. So this is why it's important to have a compass, figure out where north is um, in relation to your crime scene. And then as you can see here on this crime scene sketch, we've included it so that a jury or any other investigators looking at this crime scene sketch can kind of understand where the crime scene is in relation to north. All right, that ends our lesson today. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we will cover photographing the crime scene.